Welcome to my kitchen and today I'm gonna show you how to roast a butternut squash which is one of my favorite roasted vegetables. So we're gonna start with a medium size butternut squash just like this one. Cut the butternut squash in half just like this. Now, we're gonna peel the skin first, after we cut the end. And you can actually do it both ways. You can use this peeler, or you can peel it with a knife. So, with a peeler, you're gonna take smaller pieces, just like you can see here. So, the small piece will just take not enough skin so you're gonna have to run through it a few times before you actually get rid of all the thick layers like if you were for example do it with a knife you can see the difference because you're gonna take way more and this is what you're looking for you want this kind of color because it's gonna taste the best so if you wanted to use the peeler, you just have to uh, remove a lot of layers. So I pretty much do both ways. I mean, either way, it's perfectly fine. And do the same thing with the other side. This is the thicker side. Uh, so, I mean, be careful because cutting off the edges since uh, the banana squash is a very hard vegetable, it might be a little bit difficult. So here I'm gonna use just a knife with, because it's much easier for me um, to do it. But if you prefer the peeler, maybe you know a little bit safer or easier to operate, go ahead. And that's perfectly fine. So I will do it uh, first, peel it on one side, and then once we finished with peeling, I'm going to peel the, the bottom of it. And you are practically done with peeling. So this is how the product would look like. Cut it in half. And now you have all these insides that you have to remove. So you can remove it right now with a spoon or do it just like I do first cut in a little bit of wedges and then remove the inside one by one, whichever you prefer. For some reason, I like to do it this way. So I will uh, first cut it in little pieces and then remove each one by one. It's easier for me that way, but you can do it either way. So I like to use a spoon just like this one that you can see to start uh, removing the seeds and, and there's also banana squat has, ha, has some kind of skin uh, like a layer of it with little hair you want to remove that as well till you get to the nice and smooth surface once you are done with uh, removing the seeds you're ready to chop banana squash into fairly even pieces because when you roast them and uh, all of them are drastically different it's going to be hard for you to to bake them properly once you are done with chopping a uh, transfer uh, the vegetable into a big bowl make sure it's big enough so you can add uh, all your spices and at the end uh, mix it all together butternut squash is a great vegetable that it can be kept in the fridge for at least up to a week after you roast it and you can reuse it for different recipes i like to use it for a bowl like i made um, a quinoa bowl the other day it adds a lot of sweetness to any kind of dish great with salads as well if you use avocado and, and butternut squash it's really good uh, balanced flavor also you can make a risotto 
it's a great uh, vegetable to do that as well. Now we're gonna cut the top part of butternut squash. It's much easier as you can see. And most of the time, if, if you bought a good one, it's not gonna have seeds on top. So it's much easier to cut and you, you get way more of the vegetable on top of it. Now drizzle with one tablespoon of good olive oil or coconut oil, whichever you like. Now sprinkle a little bit of salt, freshly ground pepper, and I love to add a little bit of cinnamon. I think butternut squash and cinnamon go really well together. Now here you're going to toss everything very well so all the spices and the little bit of olive oil that you have there are combined. Once you're done, put it on a baking sheet. I like to use the silicon, uh, as you can see, matte, uh, since nothing sticks to it, it's perfect. Now make sure that the pieces are not sticking together. Spread them as wide as possible so they can all bake beautifully evenly. I preheated my oven to 400 degrees and I put them in for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, they nicely done. They should be a little bit soft and your fork should get in them smoothly. That's how you know uh, that they are done. Well, all you have to do right now is serve. Enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more recipes like this.